If I'm helping students shoot for the high 700s in SAT math, I use math chops for a couple different things. One is to help them develop great reflexes across a broad range of skills. There are a lot of questions that show up very frequently on the test, and I need students to be able to get them right quickly so that they have more time for the other harder questions. I also use math chops to give students a high concentration of hard questions. A student who's shooting for 750 or higher can probably learn any math question on the SAT, but they need to know that it might show up. If you're just taking practice tests, there might only be five or six questions out of every 58 that are really challenging. So I use math chops to show students a lot of hard questions quickly. The first assignment is to get this level up, and they do that by taking the challenge. If the student can get 10 questions right before getting three wrong, then their score will go up and all the other games on the site get a little bit harder. Now, initially their score is going to be a 330, so they'll need to burn through those early levels, but I think it's a good exercise. It only takes about 20 or 30 minutes, and students will almost always miss some of those easy or medium questions. And typically they're questions that you never would have suspected were problems for the student. When you meet, have the student share their screen and go to the Analyze page. From here you can see all their stats, the categories they did well in, the categories they might need a little extra help in. The very first thing that I'll do is just kind of review the questions that they did. All the green ones are ones they got right, but the red ones are the ones they got wrong. Sometimes it'll be something easy where maybe they made a small mistake. Uh, it could be a timing issue. Could be something small that they've never learned but you could teach them really quickly or it could be something really advanced and difficult like factor by grouping or u substitution or a very difficult word problem in some cases this will just be a quick review and you can let them keep working on on this in the background while you work on other things like reading or grammar but sometimes you want to go into this more deeply and so during the session, you can create a quiz together. You can adjust the number of questions with this. You can turn off the timer if you want. And sometimes you can just focus on missed questions. But if you want, you can also focus on specific categories, like missed algebra moves, for example. Once your student's gotten this score to the appropriate level, you're going to want them to start working on category challenges. These are short quizzes that target specific areas at specific levels of difficulty. If you get six questions right before you get two wrong, then you're going to earn one of these green tokens that looks like this. I normally will not have my advanced students working on these easier category challenges, but I will have them earn everything from 680 up. And there are a couple different ways to assign category challenges to students. One is to work one category at a time, you know, get level 680 and 710 and algebra moves and then move on to exponents. Another is just to say your assignment this week is to earn three level 680 badges and you pick the ones that you want to work on. Either way, they're a great way to hunt for these random questions that maybe show up two or three times every 10 tests. You can't ignore them if you're trying to get a 750 or higher but you do want to find a lot of them quickly. You can also hunt for these questions by going into your tutor account and creating a quiz. I like to do this during the session, so I'll select the exam, I'll select the level of difficulty, I can adjust the number of questions and turn off the timer if I want, and then I'll go into the specific categories. So here you can just kind of talk to the student about what they know and what they'd like to work on. So if they know how to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, then maybe you'll delete that one. But if they need help with use substitution, maybe you'll keep those two. And you can mix and match, match categories. So we've pinned those, they're gonna stay there. But if I change the category, say to exponents, then the rest of the quiz will have exponent questions. We can either just work through those in real time by clicking on start quiz, or I can assign it to the student and name it whatever I want, uh, find my student in my list, and then just assign it to them. Once it's been assigned, it'll appear on their home page. For homework, the student is mostly going to be going back and forth between the level challenge and the category challenges. So when this level's too low, they'll take this challenge, try to get the score up. 
when this level is accurate, they'll go over to the category challenges and work through all the different areas and badges. These ones will get unlocked as their level goes up. And you can really cover a lot of ground just going back and forth between those two types of quizzes. Sometimes you just need the student to find new questions. And for that, the games are great. Diamond Dash is a time management game. You get five minutes to answer all of these questions. This can kind of accomplish the same job of exposing students to lots of different questions, but in a little bit more fun setting. Break the Bank is another one that's really good. You bet your points according to how confident you are. So I think this one is four, and I'm gonna bet all my points. And then now my score has been doubled. The score predictor is another one that I really like, particularly in the week leading up to the test. They start at a 3.30, and every time they get a question right, the score goes up. I'll usually tell the student to try to get a 7.40 or a 7.80, and it'll take about 10 or 15 minutes in total. So it's something they can do every day of the week leading up to that test. It covers all the ranges of difficulty, all the different problem type areas, and it replicates that real test pressure without them having to take a full practice test. So that's how I like to use Math Chops with my high scoring SAT students. If you have any questions about this or anything else, please email me at mike at mathchops.com.